She promised she could babysit. 76th lesson Unsweetened applesauce Let's see. It's Tuesday, and I can eat two raw carrots, a grapefruit half, and four ounces of unsweetened applesauce. Hmm, I should have started this damn diet next month. I have a dinner with John tomorrow night at that new Tex-Mex restaurant, Pepe Ranchero. What am I going to eat? Nachos without the nachos? I shouldn't have been born. I should really call John and explain the whole thing or just call off the date. Life is such a drag. What did I do with that can of whipped cream? Well, I know I shouldn't, but okay. Monday, I start my diet. Exercise. Damn it, the whipped cream is unsweetened. I should have made a date with her at the Tex-Mex restaurant. Let's call off the picnic. It's a drag that Stan's coming for dinner tomorrow. An ounce of prevention yields a pound of cure. 78th lesson Where do you go to school? When I was living in San Francisco last year, I had hoped to find a night course in commercial English since I was working during the day. That must not have been too difficult, with all the continuing education programs at the universities and community colleges in the Bay Area. True, but it was. I ended up taking Zen philosophy at Berkeley with a Laotian monk and auto mechanics at adult school at Oakland Vocational High School. That's incredible. You couldn't have done that back home. Vive la différence, as they say in California. Exercise I've been waiting for you since noon. Since I am in California, I would like to take Zen philosophy at Berkeley. That must be difficult. I used to go to high school. She studies mechanics with a Tibetan monk. Isn't that incredible? 79th lesson We want to go to Harlem. Please take us to the Cotton Club. We'd like to visit Harlem. And I'd like to be the Queen of England. Sorry, ladies, but the company that owns this taxi refuses to let us accept fares that take us above 125th Street. Didn't you read Bonfire of the Vanities by Tom Wolfe? No, we haven't. Can you drop us off at 125th Street and we'll walk from there? How about Bloomingdale's or Macy's, the world's largest department store, ladies, or better yet, Abraham and Strauss. They're having a white sale. Sorry for the pun. Why not take the D train uptown directly to Harlem if you really have your heart set on it? We're too tired to spend hours in the subway. Plus, we're not familiar with the public transportation system in Manhattan. 
Might I suggest then the Bronx Zoo or the Cloisters? We can take the East Side Drive, pass by the Washington Bridge, and miss Harlem totally, and it'd be a good fare for me. You don't understand, mister. We are only here for a few days, and we insist on going to Harlem. May I ask where you two ladies call home? I am from Nairobi, and my pen pal, Mrs. Goodman, is from Newark, New Jersey. Two great places, if I may say so myself. Exercise I don't want to miss Harlem. I would like to spend a day or two in Manhattan. Please drop us off at the zoo. The man who owns this taxi refuses to take us to the Empire State Building. Will you miss me? 80th lesson. What are you saying? The bathrooms in urban high schools are terribly unhealthy and unsafe, breeding drug use and sexual promiscuity. I don't want to misunderstand you or misquote you, but are you advocating that public restrooms should be shut down completely in our community's schools? Don't overreact. I didn't exactly say that, you knee-jerking liberal. Don't get angry and jump to absurd conclusions. Try being more careful with your analysis. Are you saying that I'm careless in my appraisal of your position? Is that it? No, but a bit more gentleness on your part could only serve to strengthen our friendship and professional relationship. Don't beat around the bush. Do you want to close them or not? Exercise I don't want to be misunderstood. Dangerous people breed mistrust. This guy is a jerk. He always jumps to conclusions and doesn't let you speak. If you misbehave, I'll tell your parents. Are you liberal or conservative? 81st Lesson The Carpenter Cindy, who was that gentleman who answered the phone this morning? Oh, him. Yes, him. So who was it? He's the carpenter who's remodeling the top floor of the house. Oh. I thought that since Steve's departure you had a new honey that you didn't tell me about. John, what's your problem? The carpenter? Mr. Clinton and me? <laughs> That's an idea which never crossed my mind. Just forget I mentioned it. Sorry for being so jealous. Come to think about it, Mr. Clinton is very handy. You, on the other hand, can't even change a light bulb, John. Exercise Honey, do you know a good plumber that we can call? Our dog, who is very old, can't walk up the stairs. Please refill my glass. 
Sorry for being so unhandy. It never crossed my mind to study in another country. 82nd Lesson Carol and Her Guitar Carol's bus arrives in Hartford at 12. When did it leave New York? It was either 5 to 8 or 5 past 8. I can't remember. I wonder if she remembered to bring her guitar with her. She's so forgetful. I can always lend her mine if she forgets hers. Both my mom and dad have electric guitars. They could bring theirs over if push comes to shove. They can come tomorrow at around 7 and spend the evening with us. That way they'll get to hear her play her Christmas carols. It's going to be nice having Carol at home for a few days. We haven't been able to enjoy her company since the 4th of July picnic. You mean the Memorial Day long weekend. Exercise She took the 8 p.m. coach to Los Angeles. We're either going to Puerto Rico or Trinidad on our honeymoon. Can I borrow your car, Dad? What a wonderful song that is! Both of them were able to find a well-paid job. 83rd Lesson Is that all, Mr. Larson? Jennifer, can you come in here, please, and bring the Burton Brownie Corporation file with you? Yes, Mr. Larson. Send an email to Burton's assistant, Jasper Billings, to confirm our meeting on Friday, but propose 4 p.m. instead of 3. Are they coming here, or are we going there? The meeting is set for here, but find out if that jerk Jim Rudiger is coming with them to the signing. I hope he's not coming. And book the conference room for two hours, and have six copies of the contract ready for signing. Make sure that I'm sitting to Burton's left. Burton's deaf and is right here. Don't forget. And we'd better have a bottle of Dom Perignon on ice. Then call Randy in our legal department in the Bay Area office, and make sure he's on hold and ready to jump in if we hit a snag. It'll be 1 p.m. on the West Coast. Got it? Is that all, Mr. Larson? No. Ask Raphael if he can cut my hair at 11 in my office. Exercise His file contained a strange letter signed Santa Claus. Bob will be sailing to Europe instead of flying. The wedding plans are on hold until we find enough money to pay for the party. Please make sure that the dog does not sleep on the bed. Why don't you call the legal department? 85th Lesson Suburban Life Ben, I'll be right back. I'm heading over to the Kingston Mall. I'm taking the Land Rover. My car needs gas. I won't be long. I have to pick up some jeans for Kenny at the Gap. 
He's outgrown all his clothes again. He has shot up like a weed. At this rate, we could own the gap. I knew I should have bought stock when the company went public. I'll be back by six at the latest. Don't forget to put the chicken in the oven at 515. Set it at 250 degrees for 40 minutes. And throw together a salad if you're inspired. If you have a problem, call me on the cellular telephone. Hun, can you pick up my gray suit at Sundance Cleaners? Exit 8. It was ready yesterday, but I didn't have a chance to swing around and get it. It's prepaid, so don't pay again. Here's the ticket. Exercise In 1983, we moved to the eastern suburbs of Chicago. Don't forget to pick up the kids at the cinema. Ben will be getting off at exit 11 and going to the airport right away. If you have a chance, please send me a check for the opera tickets I bought you. The stock for Ford Motors has gone up $3 since 10 o'clock. 86th Lesson The Joke What's black and white and red all over? How am I supposed to know? Tell me. A newspaper. I was expecting something funnier. Okay. What's black and white and red all over? Is this a trick? I'm waiting. Well, according to you, a newspaper. Wrong. A sunburned zebra. Exercise. Have you read the fashion magazine, The Red Zebra? Tell me a joke. I love to laugh. Teddy was supposed to be home before 6 p.m. According to the newspaper, it's going to rain tomorrow. I'm sorry, but these are the wrong size jeans for me. 87th Lesson Cyber Veggies Jean was about to go food shopping for veggies for her famous vegetable soup when we saw a program on Channel 13 about an Internet farmer in the San Fernando Valley. In spite of modern technology, I hardly think you can grow fresh food online. No, you order your organically grown spinach and green beans and iceberg lettuce on his website, and a basket of fresh produce is delivered to your door the next morning. Door-to-door -door service. That's great, but how do you pay? By credit card, of course. I'd be afraid of giving my visa number on the Internet. You're so old-fashioned. Exercise He hardly ever eats fish. How can I marry him? I hardly know him. The child was afraid of her own shadow. 
Brad found a partner on the internet in spite of his lawyer's warning. Did you pay for this book with cash or a credit card? 88th Lesson Forget the gumbo. Good morning. Can I have your reservation number, please? H59342Y Thank you. It's coming up right away. I have your reservation right here, Mr. Webster. Ah, I also have good news. The Ford Fiesta you reserved won't be available for 30 minutes, so you're entitled to a free upgrade with air conditioning, unless you'd rather wait for the Fiesta and benefit from a coupon worth $20 at all Louisiana gumbo shops. Forget the gumbo. I'd rather take the upgrade and save a few minutes. No problem. Just sign here and off you go. If you belong to any frequent flyer programs, you're allowed a free tank of gas as well. Today's my lucky day. Exercise Do you have a reservation number, sir? If you think I'm going to lend you my Ferrari, just forget it. Mr. Wilson belongs to 12 frequent flyer programs. I'd rather wait a few minutes and buy something at the gumbo shop. Why isn't my car available? 89th Lesson Peeling an Onion My analyst told me that our children were grown adults and could take care of themselves. Well, that sounds like sound advice. I still worry about them. Why are you crying? I'm not crying. I'm peeling an onion, for goodness sake. Okay, you don't have to scream. My analyst said I should think of myself. Taking care of four kids for 30 years is enough. Exercise Were these carrots grown in your garden? It sounds like your honeymoon wasn't too romantic. For goodness sake, don't walk on the carpet with your golf shoes, hun. My analyst says it's healthy to scream. I don't like to cry, so peel the onion yourself. 90th Lesson Adoption Hello. May I speak with Mr. Watkins or Mr. Birnbaum, please? This is Mr. Watkins. Mr. Watkins, this is Mrs. Gillespie of the Sunshine Adoption Agency. Yes. I have good news for you and Mr. Birnbaum. Your request to adopt a child has been accepted by the state of California. That's great! I'm so happy I could cry! Warren always wanted to be a father. Apparently, the State Adoption Board thought that you'd be good parents. 
I hope so. We think so in any case. Congratulations again. We'll be sending you some papers to fill out and an affidavit for you and Warren to sign. Exercise I hope they'll be able to adopt that child. I hope so too. He made a strange request. He asked for a hotel room with no windows. Bring the affidavit and your pet gorilla will belong to the city zoo. Mr. Smith got a fax with good news. Fill her up, please. 90 second lesson. The prom. I gave him my word, Mom. I have to be able to go with him to the prom next Saturday, and that's that. Over my dead body, little girl. Your father and I told you we don't approve of your riding on the back of a Harley Davidson with that weirdo. But you drove cross-country with Dad in a beat-up van in the 60s when you were only 20. Did Grandma and Grandpa agree to it? <laughs> I seriously doubt it. If I did that, you'd flip out. That was different, Pam. I lied to them. I told them I was traveling with my cousin Trudy and her German shepherd, Max. Plus, the times were different. Guess what, Mom? I'm going to the prom with my girlfriend, Anne, and her pet shark, Batman. Anne will be chaperoned by the Green Beret. Pam, I trust you. Don't do it. Exercise Your uncle and aunt don't approve of premarital sex. She gave her girlfriend Anne her word. I don't trust you. My mother agrees with me that I should invite Harry to the prom. I doubt the Bulls will win the championship this season. 93rd Lesson Recipe Brenda's Famous Omelette Beat three fresh eggs in a bowl with a whisk. Add a pinch of salt and a dash of milk or light cream. Grate two ounces of cheddar cheese and dice half a ripe tomato. Chop a small onion and a quarter of a green pepper. Melt a dab of butter in a frying pan and when it's hot, pour in the egg mixture. Stir for a few seconds, and then add the cheese, tomato, onion, and green pepper. Cook over a high flame for two to three minutes, and then flip the omelet. Careful not to break it. Turn off the stove and leave the omelet in the pan for another minute. Sprinkle on a bit of black pepper and garnish the dish with sprigs of fresh parsley. Serve immediately with lightly buttered toast. Exercise Beat nine eggs into a bowl with a whisk. I don't know how to cook, but I can turn on and off the stove. Serve the steaks with baked potatoes and chives. Stir the soup every half a minute. 
I'll have two and a half chickens to go, please. 94th lesson. Listen to me. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is William H. Bridges, and I know you've come here this morning to learn more about the 10 steps to building better bridges in your relationships at home and work. But in fact, it is you, the participants, who are really going to teach this seminar. Half of you already know the answers, whereas the other half of you know precisely what are the right questions to ask. So, if you're ready, let's begin. Let's get the show on the road. The first step is very simple, but it's one that you're likely to forget unless you repeat it to yourself five times a day, starting right now. It's not good enough to hear someone. In order to maintain a quality relationship, you have to listen. And after you have listened carefully, you have to be able to act accordingly. For example, your wife tells you that she is not pleased that you have canceled the family vacation to Mexico because of too much work. Does that sound familiar? You're not alone. What is she really saying? And what are you going to do about it? Exercise. Five steps to making more money. If you listen to your partner, you've already won half the battle. To surf in the Gulf of Mexico sounds like a great idea. What are you going to do about the broken window? Teach me how to speak Spanish, Carlos. I'm going to Puerto Rico. 95th lesson. Cousins. Mr. Kotembu, I'm an investment banker. How can I help you? I'm in Detroit for two weeks, doing research for my doctoral thesis at the University of Lagos in Nigeria. I'm tracing African ancestral roots backwards, and I have reason to believe we're cousins. Mr. Kotembu, let me get that straight. You think I, George Jackson of Detroit, Michigan, am related to you because I'm black and you're black? What do you think your family name was? before Mr. Jackson of Macon, Georgia, bought your great-great-grandfather in the 1840s. Don't tell me it was Katimbo. How would you know anyway? Look at these documents, Mr. Jackson. Now that you mention it, I do see a bit of a resemblance around the eyes. Wait till I tell my kids that we're Nigerian. Exercise. I'm doing research on my family roots in Norway. Detroit is the automobile capital of the world. Look at these photos of your friends at the prom. Mr. Jackson's great-grandfather was a ballet teacher. The accident was related to drugs. 96th lesson. Dear Mr. Jones. Great Desserts, Inc. 801 Lakeshore Avenue. Chicago, Illinois. 60541. Telephone 408 Three two one five thousand. Fax four zero eight 
321-1234. Email rbailey at greatdesserts.com. Mr. Benjamin Jones, 618 Tremont Street, Apartment 4B, Boston, Mass., 02317. Dear Mr. Jones, Thank you for sending us your resume for the position in our advertising department. As per our telephone conversation of April 15, 2004, I am enclosing a copy of the latest issue of Great Desserts, the leading magazine on the world's best desserts, which we publish monthly. In your letter, you mentioned your commitment to advertising sales, and in this spirit, I am sure you'll find the enclosed information useful in helping you understand better our company's commercial opportunities. We were particularly impressed by your past experience with the marketing of the Jell-O brand and your sales record in the chocolate industry. Please return the enclosed form so that we can process your application and set up an interview. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to contact me at the above address. Sincerely, Mr. Robert Bailey, Sales and Marketing Manager, Enclosures. Exercise The company's headquarters are located in Chicago. As per our telephone conversation, I am sending you my resume. Professor Craig was impressed with my translations of James Joyce's letters. Don't hesitate to call me night or day. Time magazine is published weekly. 97th lesson. A visit to Disney World. Who here has not yet visited Disney World in Orlando? We've been to Disneyland in Anaheim, but never to Disney World. Did you like it? Like it? We loved it. The kids liked the attractions best, but Jim and I loved the Magic Kingdom. How long were you there? Not as long as we would have liked. Only two days. But we were able to do lots. All the major attractions but the new Space Mountain. Was it as great as they say? Yeah, it was like living a childhood dream and nightmare. Exercise Who has not yet tried parachuting? I like it when you tell me that you love me. Walt Disney was able to accomplish a lot. Motherhood is celebrated on Mother's Day. To visit Death Valley is like visiting another planet. 99th Lesson Two Couples at Brunch I thought the film we saw last night was the best picture we've seen all year. Get lost, Joe. I can't believe you liked it. Eh, but then again, considering that you loved movies like Murphy 3 and The Gorilla, why should I be surprised? Hey, let's have brunch before we kill ourselves with such caustic insults. They have a great buffet here. 
We come here at least once a month just for the brunch. And after the eggs and sausage and French toast and pancakes and bagels and lox and cereal, they bring out the hot lunch dishes. So save room. I'll get us a big plate of fresh fruit and a pitcher of orange juice. Why don't you go get toasted bagels and cream cheese for the table, Joe? Sid is already waiting in line for the Belgian waffles. He loves the waffles here. Excuse me, waiter. We need some extra glasses, please. Does anyone want a Bloody Mary to start? Okay, make it two. Coffee first, ma'am. Barb, could you grab me my sweater? It's awfully cool in here with the air conditioning. It's on the back of your chair. Thanks. That film is sure to win an Oscar for special effects. Even if you hated it, you must admit the effects were convincing. Let's talk about it after we eat. Here comes Sid with the waffles. Who wants a waffle? Here, take a fork. I asked the waiter to bring us extra maple syrup. We're driving that poor waiter crazy. Exercise. Can we have pancakes and waffles at brunch? Bill and Karen saw three movies this week. Why don't we go shopping while the kids watch TV? It's chilly at night by the lake. You'll need a sweater. I ordered one soft-boiled egg, but make it two, please. Hundredth lesson. Clichés. As it turns out, my tailor has retired. He had put his nose to the grindstone and made a good buck, just like his father had. As they say, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Last year, he bought himself a timeshare condominium in Scottsdale, Arizona. And now he and his wife spend three months a year in the southwest playing golf, swimming, and dabbling with watercolors. The rest of the time, they travel between their house on the Mediterranean and their yacht in Acapulco. It's a dog's life, huh? But is he happy? You can't judge a book by its cover. It sure looks like he's enjoying himself. He drives a pink Cadillac, drinks Chevis Regal Scotch, and wears a platinum Rolex watch studded with rubies. And just look at his utility bills. He spends more to heat the swimming pool than most of us spend on rent all year. To put the icing on the cake, he owns a famous racehorse that won the Kentucky Derby this year. So, he made so much money from being a famous Parisian tailor that he doesn't have to watch his spending. Good for him. He deserves it. He's your quintessential self-made man. So, the American dream is still possible. I thought it was just a myth. Nobody gets rich from hemming trousers and sewing collars anymore. Can we really look forward to getting rich, too? Don't hold your breath. Exercise. My tailor lives on a boat in Alcapulco. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. It looks like it's going to rain. Betsy is looking forward to riding a camel in Tunisia this summer. I wouldn't hold my breath if I were you. 
Hundred and first lesson. The bridal shower. Sandy, that is so sweet. I've never seen such adorable pajamas with penguins on the arms and legs. How do you know I liked penguins? Jean, I'd wait a few nights before I dare wear those. Doug might change his mind. <laughs> Open the big one with the blue bow next, Jean. Okay, Mom, can you pass that one to me? I wonder what it could be. It's huge. I warn you, Jean. It's heavy, and it wasn't on your list. Okay, you shouldn't have. I can't believe you bought us a lawnmower. We don't even have a lawn. That's what you think, Jean. Open the envelope, dear. Mom, what's this all about? Don't tell me that. Does Doug know? <gasps> you didn't, Mom. You and Dad made a down payment on that house in Springfield. I'm going to cry. This calls for a little champagne. Exercise. That's sweet, Gloria. You're a wonderful friend. A little wine with dinner sounds like a good idea, Harold. I wouldn't dare wear that red tie to the office. We can't afford to make a down payment on the house. Tammy's bridal shower was a big success. Hundred and second lesson. A book for Mendy. I asked for the feminine mystique. Which I needed for my yoga teacher Mindy, who's writing about the women's movement in Peru, and you sent me the female eunuch by Germaine Greer, a writer whose work Mindy already knows. Sorry about that. You only asked for a book which could be relevant to the subject. You should read Anna Perez, a woman who has made a great contribution to the feminist cause. When asking for information in general, should one indicate both the title and author of a book? Usually, the title is all the information one needs to find a book which is in the library collection. How much literature have you acquired which concerns my topic? A hundred and sixty-four books in the area of gender studies. But only one on women in Peru. Exercise. I asked for vanilla ice cream, not strawberry. This is a writer whose capacity to stimulate the imagination is amazing. The banker who asked for my tax information is from Boise, Idaho. There are a thousand ways to cook chicken. When Sandy asked for her check, I lied and told her that it was in the mail. Hundred and third lesson. A hypochondriac visits her chiropractor. Okay, Mrs. Goldstein, where does it hurt this time? You've come to see me three times this week already, and as much as you know I like treating you, I'm just a bit skeptical about the seriousness of your ailment. Doctor Calder, 
How dare you imply that I'm faking it? You know I have a chronic lower back problem. I've been coming to see you regularly for ten years now since Herb's hernia operation. Or was it since my second hysterectomy? Whatever. My third vertebra is acting up again and I'm in agony. I was vacuuming the bedroom when I spotted Herb's boxer shorts, the ones with the seahorses, curiously under the lazy boy reclining chair next to my pride and joy, the Stairmaster. So, I stooped down to pick them up, and that's when I heard the crunch in my back, the third vertebra again. Mrs. Goldstein... Open your mouth wide, please, and say, ah. Doctor, you're a chiropractor, and it's my back that's killing me, so what's with the mouth and the stethoscope? Just a theory, Mrs. Goldstein. Based on my diagnosis, I prescribe a baby aspirin twice a day and two weeks in Florida. Dr. Calder, I'm getting a second opinion. Exercise Where does it hurt? I'm a bit skeptical about the painting. I think it's a fake. Herb was vacuuming the living room carpet when he heard the baby cry. As much as I love to cook pasta, I prefer when others cook for me. Do you want the chicken or the lamb? Whatever. 104th Lesson Congratulations! You're now an American. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the annual swearing-in ceremony for all new naturalized citizens of the United States. As you know, you all have successfully completed the qualification process and have been approved to receive full citizenship of this country. We are proud to add you to the ranks of the American people. Please rise, place your right hand on your heart, and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. By the power entrusted to me from the President of the United States, I officially declare all of you, as of this moment, noon on May 14th, 2001, to be full-fledged citizens of the United States. Congratulations! As I call your name, please step forward to receive your naturalization certificate and then proceed to the reception tent to your far right for a welcoming drink generously provided by the Citrus Fruit Growers of America. Mr. Kim Tran Kim Ms. Hortensia Yardinero Mr. Boris Yasmenchenko, Mr. and Mrs. Yuri and Yasmina Gashangarian. Exercise. Congratulations. You're now a graduate of Harvard. 
We have been approved for a house loan. By the time Brad was 18, he was a full-fledged pilot in the Air Force. Ms. Yadinero, step forward, please. I have a present for you. The American flag contains 50 stars and 14 stripes. 105th Lesson Breaking up is hard to do. Goodbyes are always difficult, and this one is no exception. So I'll try not to be too sappy. But you know how sentimental Americans can be. We've spent nearly four beautiful months together, some 30 minutes each day. And I guess you could say that we've gotten kind of attached to each other. I'll miss the way you come back to me every evening after dinner or each morning before work and faithfully pick me off the shelf or your night table, gently crack me open to the next lesson and read and repeat the words that I am made of, the sentences that I form, the dumb little jokes that I love to tell. I know that some of you jumped ahead a few lessons or skipped a few days and others didn't put in the full 30 minutes or cheated on the exercises. But I always understood, and I knew deep in my heart that you'd be coming back, that you'd be making it to the end. I believed in you from the start, and I'm proud as any teacher or parent a good friend would be in the fine progress you've achieved. And remember, you did it yourself, with just a wee bit of help from the sidelines. So, stand up and take a bow. I wish you all the best of everything out there in the world where American English has become so important. I'm sure you're ready for the challenge. As they say to actors and actresses in Hollywood and on Broadway, break a leg, which means nothing more than good luck. So, have a nice life, and don't forget to write. You have my address. It's in the book. And, who knows, maybe we'll meet again when you're ready to climb a new mountain. Yours truly, The Book P.S. <laughs> Does anyone have a handkerchief? Exercise American films tend to be sentimental. Jack and Jill were devoted to each other. Barney loves to tell dirty jokes. Don't tell your friends to break a leg when they leave for a skiing trip. Have a nice time at the English as a Second Language Convention in Sydney. See you later, alligator. In a while, crocodile.